Welcome back to Fox Hills Black Report. Well, May is National Foster Care Awareness Month, and state leaders in Minnesota are launching a study to figure out why African Americans and just black children in general re-enter the foster care system in Minnesota at a disproportionate rate. So according to Minnesota, that uh, judicial branch officials, the federal standard states less than 8.1% of children should re-enter foster care. Now, according to uh, 2021 state data in Minnesota, 12% of kids re-enter the system, which exceeds the federal standard by 4%. African-American and black children re-entered the system at an alarming 19%. Joining us now is uh, a good friend of mine, a colleague. We go back a little bit, Jasmine Sanders, a foster care advocate and the co-host of the D.L. Hughley Show. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, how are you? Good, good, good to good, see good. you, girl. Good to see you, too, hon. Welcome to the good show. Good trip in yeah, D.C., no, right? <laughs> I know we had a wonderful, wonderful time. It was good. Good look. Well, speaking of wonderful time, just this weekend, you know, I was participating in a fundraiser for of foster care awareness. We know that black children mm -hmm. continue to lead in the numbers for foster care reentry programs. What do you, why do you think this problem still remains and what can our viewers do about it? Well, the first thing I think is, um, I think people misunderstand foster children, period. I mean, you have to also think that, you know, these children are gonna come with a myriad of problems when you consider the fact that there is something going on with them, you know, emotionally, mentally, a lot of those things are not really addressed. And I think, first of all, we need to advocate for more money uh, at the state and federal level to be given to organizations um, to help these children. Um, when you take a child who's already broken, either because of, you know, like in my case, um, I was given up at birth and placed into the foster system from birth all the way until I was about five years old. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand when you think about when children are first born, you know, there is a, a bond that is developed with that mother, with that parent. And when that is broken, you're going to suffer as a child. You just are. And so we need more mental health awareness for these children. We need more resources for them. And so I would encourage everyone to research as much as you can. If you have love in your heart, if you have the ability to help children in some shape, form or fashion, mm -hmm. you should give back to organizations. I am now the executive director of an organization here in Los Angeles called Arts, Film and Goods Pantry Foundation. And we do things like that. Like we're hosting uh, an art exhibit where children will be drawing and people have the opportunity uh, in a silent auction to purchase those. And all of those proceeds will go back to help these children who are in such dire need. Indeed. So you just mentioned that you were a you know, former foster child yourself. Talk about some of those harsh realities that black uh, foster children in particular face in foster care. You know, you said you mentioned you were a newborn, especially as you got a little older and were better mm -hmm. able to understand that maybe something isn't right or I'm not being treated the way that I should be. Talk a little bit about that, Jasmine. Well, Courtney, I will say this. It's very unfortunate, but it is true. The older that you get in the system, the least likely you are to be adopted. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. black and brown children are the last to go. We are not mm -hmm. high on the priority mm -hmm. list of what people want. You know, and it's very sad. And young boys in particular. I myself was so blessed that at the age of, you know, I almost turned five before I found my forever home. Wow. Um, and I know that would have been the cutoff. I, I was a girl. Girls tend to go faster than black boys uh, and it's it's just very very sad um I don't really know the why of that. I mean, obviously, in my mind, I think race, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. systemic racism plays a huge part in that as to why, you know, young white kids are adopted faster. And then, unfortunately, when you grow up in that system, you age out and then you become homeless and they mm -hmm. send you on your way with a garbage bag with all of your belongings. So for me, uh, this is a huge passion of mine because I know it was nothing but the grace of God mm -hmm. that uh, sent me my forever home. I went to four foster her families first and finally I got one that decided we're gonna keep her oh wow can you tell us a little bit about some of the misconceptions about foster youth um, you know there is a lot of stigma out there uh, around foster care and and youth that, that that navigate through that system can you dispel some of the misconceptions about foster youth for our well first of all for, for foster does not equal negative 
foster does not equal bad because you're a foster kid that does not automatically label you as that. Mm -hmm. You are just someone who needs a gentle, loving, supporting um, uh, family basically. And I, I hate that. And I remember early on, I didn't find out that I was adopted uh, until I was about 12. And then as I pursued searching my biological family, that's when I found out that I had actually been in foster families. Now, mm. truth be told, I'll be fully transparent because Courtney's a friend of mine, so I know she'll take <laughs> gentle care of me. Yeah. Um, I was a very troubled kid. Mm -hmm. And it was because I, I didn't feel loved. I, I didn't feel that I had any value. And so I acted out quite a bit. And I'm just thankful that I was surrounded by family and friends who knew that we just need to love her, mm -hmm. just keep loving on her. And I turned out just fine. Yeah. And so I think if we stop believing and buying into these false narratives about foster kids and how there is no hope for them. That is not true. Mm -hmm. um, and I think very much like any other young kid, you grow up, you have issues, you're trying to learn about who you are. Uh, you're trying to find your place in this world. And if you tack on that, the fact that you were either unwanted by your family or your mm -hmm. family could not care for you, of course, that's going to weigh on who mm -hmm. you are as a person and certainly uh, your level of confidence. Yeah. So, um, you know, my thing is, just give all kids a chance. They deserve it. Everyone deserves to be loved and to be in a loving environment. Yeah, we, right. we, you touched on a little earlier about you know all the organizations, one in particular that you that you had. Uh, give us a little bit more information about that, how you're involved, and how you guys take on this very daunting yet um, inspirational task of of serving uh, these young people, this this community that's often forgotten. Mm -hmm. You just on your day to day, you're not thinking about foster care and and foster care kids. You're just not. You're not. And it's so sad because, and I say this mm -hmm. um, with a little tongue in cheek, right? You know, every year, well, really all year long, we look at pets and we talk hmm. about how, you know, we got to help Adopt these dogs. Pet. And Come on now. Yes, mm -hmm. we have all of those things, but we don't have anything consistent about foster kids. We do this once a year in this particular month, all of a sudden foster kids become uh, the center of attention. But even then we have to share it with so many other things. Mm -hmm. So I decided a long time ago that that I would not only use my platform, but I would try to use as much free time as I had, my resources to do as much as I could to help. So I took on the task of becoming the executive director of this organization, Arts Film and Goods Pantry. Uh, you can find that at artsfilmandgoodspantryfoundation.com for more information about all of the wonderful things that we're doing. Uh, I also was lucky enough to meet a young woman by the name of Alex Creighton here in Los Angeles. And she has an organization called the Dreamcatcher Foundation. And we are working together right now to tackle uh, some of the self-care issues that people in foster care deal with. You have to understand, we take for granted that we wake up and we have toothpaste and we have shampoo. And, you know, for girls, we love perfume and all of that. They mm -hmm. don't have any of that. And so we are working together to help these young kids get what they need. So. Wow. You know, just do what you can, educate yourselves about the system, about the need that is there, the great need, and find it in your heart to help these children who have no one else. Wow. Thank you, sister, for all the great work that you're doing. Uh, I'm sure a number of our soulmates that are watching are going to be blessed by uh, the work that you continue to do and our ability to be a part of it. Yes, and thanks for being a light. Thank thanks for being a voice. Tell, tell DL we said behave. I really, I do my <laughs> You know I love you. And listen, I have a very wide foot, but if I were to be able to fit some of those uh, stilettos <laughs> behind you, I think I'd take the sparkly ones right there to your, to your <laughs> right. Girl. You can have them. You can have them. You can't wear them no more. I love you so much and congratulations on that uh, induction in the Library of Congress. We did our thing, huh? We did indeed. Congrats to you as well, my sister. Absolutely. I love you, Jasmine. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank indeed. you. Indeed. All right.